to the new symbol of commercial aviation. For from Douglas, the most respected name in aviation, comes the newest transport in the pure jet field, the DC-8 Jetliner. Who am I? That can wait till later. My only purpose for the present is to relate to you some of the things I have seen, things I've known were going to happen. A great forward step into aviation's tomorrow has been made. It was inevitable. I want to tell you about the newest son of a distinguished family, renowned for unequaled progress in the history of aviation. I should know. I'm an old friend of the family's. You know the family best by its initials, D.C., Douglas Commercial. The family trademark, D.C., made its first indelible impression in the remarkable history of flight with an all-metal, low-wing monoplane, the DC-1. Through the years, the Douglas family grew impressively large. The DC-2, DC-3, DC-4, DC-5, DC-6, and the DC-7. With this incomparable history, no wonder more people and more airlines fly Douglas-built aircraft. Nor am I overlooking Douglas's contribution to the military in jet flight, such as the research aircraft X-3. The Navy's mighty midget the A-4D. The Air Force's versatile B-66 series. The incomparable F-4D Sky Ray, holder of seven world speed records. And there are many more. The jet age actually dawned right after World War II. And the Douglas Aircraft Company, already deeply engrossed in building aircraft for the defense of free nations, began concentrating on jet power for the commercial field. With the advent of the Pratt & Whitney JT3 engine, Douglas engineers began pouring their vast experience into the development of a new transport design. As part of its development program, Douglas built this large manufacturing facility at Long Beach, California, the only factory designed exclusively for commercial jet construction. Inside the massive interior of the new plant, production line activity began to reflect the results of one of the most comprehensive, exhaustive research and development programs in the annals of aviation, bringing into reality a new aircraft embodying the latest ideas and discoveries in aerodynamics, in comfort, in safety, and in maintenance. Douglas aerodynamicists created the best subsonic wing yet developed for transport aircraft. Having a 30 degree sweep back, the DC-8 wing spans 139 feet 9 inches. Of three spar construction, it passes through the fuselage to become an integral part of the DC-8. to ensure maximum fatigue resistance and the optimum in structural integrity and safe design, underwater pressure tests subjected the aircraft to pressure, landing and gust loads equivalent to 130,000 flights. In preparation for this birth of a jet, systems testing went far beyond that for any previous aircraft. Wind tunnel tests were conducted for a period of more than five years. There was thorough testing of the electrical generating system, the pneumatic air conditioning, de-icing and cabin supercharging system, the hydraulic power supply system, the complete engine pod with all systems and accessories, separate tests of individual components, 
structural proof tests of the wing, fuselage, and tail surfaces. In short, every component of the DC-8 was thoroughly tested and developed to give jet flight a proven, dependable aircraft. Then, on April 19, 1958, the world of aviation first welcomed its newest arrival. Six years in the making, six years of research and development, the Douglas DC-8 was now a reality. The sleek, graceful newcomer appeared capable of carrying on the proud Douglas name. Some of its DC predecessors were there, and these veterans of flight, these aircraft of experience and of incomparable reputation, seem to be giving this new member of the DC family a thorough appraisal. Douglas subjected its new aircraft to ground and flight test programs unprecedented in scale and thoroughness. For over a month, the big jetliner graced the runways at Long Beach in a variety of taxi runs and other test activities. Although twice the size of the famed DC-7, this new aircraft of the jet age can be accommodated by any modern terminal, primarily because of a Douglas-developed wheel arrangement on the main landing gear in which the aft wheels swivel. This giant transport, weighing 300,000 pounds, 150 feet 6 inches in length, can turn through 180 degrees in a radius of less than 90 feet. Load distribution on the wheels is such that special reinforcement of the runway is not required. Yes, the ground tests proved that the DC-8 is quite a plane. The big moment, the moment of truth, had arrived. It was time to try out the wings, to learn the jetliner's characteristics and capabilities in flight. On May 30th, 1958, with an audience of thousands, the DC-8 jetliner began its first takeoff run. As it picked up speed, aviation experts and sympathetic spectators alike knew that all the skill, the experience, and the reputation of the Douglas Aircraft Company was at the showdown stage. The liftoff was graceful, requiring less than a third of the runway. The DC-8 jetliner was airborne. For commercial aviation, it marked the start of a new era in passenger flight. For more than two hours, the jetliner cruised the skies, and many a Southern Californian looked up to marvel at this new bird and listened to the new sound in the sky. The landing was smooth. This is Edwards Air Force Base home for the jetliner as it undergoes a rugged, complete checkout both on the ground and in flight. So determined is Douglas to give commercial aviation a new concept in speed, comfort, economy, and dependability, a jet transport worthy of the name of Douglas, that nine DC-8s will participate in the test program. While the test phase is in progress, DC-8s coming off the production line will be available for crew training, enabling the world's airlines to establish route operations at the earliest possible date. Douglas has an unmatched record of giving the air traveler the utmost in comfort. In the DC-8 jetliner, all the company's knowledge and experience and the very latest in interior fabrics have been utilized to make the cabin a showcase. The interior decor depends upon the wishes of the airline operator. So too, the seating arrangement. The first class cabin contains from 118 to 122 seats. Tourist cabins contain up to 144 seats. The cabin volume of the DC-8 is that of a three bedroom and den house, roughly 13,000 cubic feet. Air scoops, located beneath the nose of the plane, supply air for the cooling system. 
By being positioned beneath the nose, the possibility of engine fumes entering the cabin is eliminated. The air is fed to four turbo compressors, supplying fresh air to all occupied areas. The plane's air conditioning system is of such magnitude that nine normal homes could be cooled by it simultaneously. Three years of research and development by Douglas Acoustical Engineers resulted in a device that muffles noise to satisfactory levels. While inside the plane, passengers will marvel at the absolute quiet as they speed to their destinations. Yes, new standards of quiet and comfort are now available to air travelers. And speed? Non-stop transoceanic and transcontinental flights in all parts of the world can be made in less than half the time required for piston-powered or turboprop types of engines. sky-view windows, passengers will experience the thrill of looking at the world from as high as 40,000 feet. At that altitude, the cabin is pressurized to a 6,700-foot altitude. Here is unsurpassed passenger comfort, and for the world's airlines, the maximum in operating economy. Oh, yes. Who am I? The name is Dependability. Douglas and I have worked together for decades. In the DC-8, you see the result of Douglas manufacturing skill combined with the experience gained through billions of successful transport air miles. With the utmost confidence in the future of commercial aviation, Douglas, in one of the biggest private financial ventures ever recorded, has opened new horizons for jet-powered flight. To the Douglas Aircraft Company, this is its proudest achievement in 38 years of designing and manufacturing aircraft. This birth of a jet, this DC-8 jetliner.